Hey guys, I'm Rachel Cruz. I'm George Camel. And this is Smart, Smart Money, Money Happy, Happy Hour. Hour. Cheers, George. Cheers. Mm. Well, this is the show where two friends who happen to be money experts <laughs> talk about what you're talking about. Everything from pop culture, current events, and money. That's right. And uh, today we're talking about the iconic, iconic American middle class. Should we shorten it to mid class? It's like what the kids are saying these days, right? But I feel like it's offensive when like a Gen Z is like, that's mid. It's kind of a derogatory <laughs> statement. Oh, shoot. They're saying it's like. I think we should say middle class. It just feels like it, okay. gives, the, it gives the weight that it needs. I was throwing it, it out there. It was an option, Rachel. Gives the weight just that it option. needs. Yep. Well, do you think today, today's drink is mid? Uh, it's something. It's, it's pretty, pretty intense. It's pretty intense. There's a lot going on, as they say. When you don't know how to taste wine, you just say, there's a lot going on here. It's very there's complex. A, there's a there's a. Kind of like telling babies that they're oh, so precious. They're so precious. That baby's so, so precious. precious. <laughs> well, it's today's drink is called a Waldorf. And it's something. And uh, I, th- I assume that comes from Waldorf, like New York City Waldorf. Aus- yeah. Astor- Waldorf Astoria. Astoria. And, Those two or Blair words just feel from Gossip bougie. Girl. Anything, anything. Headbands, vibes. You lost me. You got it. Oh, man. My knowledge of Gossip Girl is very it's limited. It's a great binge. You should do it. I think I was it. too busy watching the OC. Is that similar? Or Laguna Beach? Uh, that's similar like time. California vibes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Very. But go wealth in Manhattan. And that's Gossip Girl? Yeah. It's great. If you love a good bougie <laughs> show, no they're like ultra bougie in Manhattan, which New York's my thing. So that's it, true. it just spoke to everything I wish. I was. <laughs> wow. I'm just kidding. The truth comes out on Smart Money Happy I'm Hour. I'm totally kidding. Well, hey, we're going to reveal the recipe for the Waldorf, our rating for it, and the cost per glass. So stick around to the very end if you want to hear that. Okay. So we're talking about middle class, George. So what comes to mind when you hear the words middle class? Because you hear it in the news. You hear it in pop culture. You hear it in everyday life. Yeah. I mean, I immediately think chilies for some reason. Okay. <laughs> I don't know why. I go food and I go, Chocolate, what is like mid-tier cake. food? Yeah. Yeah. Chocolate molten cake. Uh, what's this? The skillet? Oh. The skillets at Chili's? That's no, a thing. No, I don't think that's skillets at I Chili's. I think they have a skillet. The molten cake is at Chili's with chips and salsa. I was a TGI so Fridays guy myself. Okay, they may have skillets Which there. was very middle class fancy. Yeah, it's great. What about you? I love what do you think of middle class? I think about the backbone of America. <laughs> wow. Way <laughs> to flex on them. I thought I would, George. I think of like the work, like- um, The working class. Yeah, well, I just think of like just the ima- the average American family out there who's okay. like making it happen. Not ultra wealthy, not poverty. Just there's a yeah, huge they're making, population. They're in doing, you know, they're doing good. They're you know working hard and make a great income and do well for their family. Okay. Middle America, maybe I don't know. Like it's like that's a, that's the vibes that I get. Like Midwestern folk. Yeah. Is that where you're going yeah, with? But I do think it's a lot of like of I'm a Midwestern folk. Exactly. But I do think Come it's uh, it's how I grew up. But, you know, you we get grew, we you grew get up LA middle. and you get New York City yeah, and everything yeah. in between is like, all right, that's Which that's is America. Class. Can we Which just say is that? the real America? That's the real America. I grew up middle class. Yeah, absolutely. I, I would say I grew Maybe up I grew up, I don't know, bankruptcy? Where does that put you when you're born? I mean, you guys had quite, quite the uh, the comeback story the comeback with Dave story Ramsey and Sharon happen, Ramsey. Yeah. But we grew up like Olive Garden yeah. for birthdays. Like a nice meal was like, we're going to the, and it still is 100%, 100%. today. It's expensive to eat out. Yes, it is. But you grew up middle class too, right? Yeah. My parents were immigrants from Egypt and Syria. Yep. And I feel like growing up, we never, you know, kind of struggled. There wasn't this like, but there was all always the kind of like, well, we can't afford that. There's a limit to life, yeah. yes. But I never felt like, I, I, oh my gosh, you weren't my life Blair is Waldorf, tr- where there's no limits. Yeah, on Gossip Girl. Thank for you for the Gossip yeah, Girl that reference. Wasn't you. That wasn't Blair you. Waldorf. Okay, so name. here's a fun quiz, George. So the everyone listening, <laughs> I think this is to great. take take this quiz as you're listening. You ready for this? And it's a yes. These are yes or no's. We didn't want to make it real simple for you. And the quiz is if you primarily grew up middle class in America. Okay. Yes or no? You can relate. Did you have great value brand snacks in the cupboard instead of the name brand? Ooh, this is the Walmart oh, brand for those of you that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you don't know what great you know value what? is, you're probably not. I will class. say Sharon Ramsey cereal was always name brand. We had like the Captain Crunch, like we had oh, the actual branded cereal. Very classy, Sharon. But but uh, snacks may have gone more generic. How about you? 
Yeah, I remember having some generic brand, but we also had a, a lot of name brand. We also didn't have like Walmart wasn't a big deal because I'm from Boston. So we had like more localized oh, okay. yeah. grocery stores, yeah, but we this. would buy a generic brand. If you had a plastic bag in the house where you stored all the other plastic bags in the grocery store, yes. I, I still do that. I still do that too. <laughs> 1,000%. Because it's great. It's great to have these bags around. Genius. Yes. I, I did get a bag us. storage thing, you know, that like- No, that's too bougie. Tuck all the bags in. Too bougie. You know, we cupboard. ran out of ours- uh, you ran out of bags? Yes, because I think like the way they like some some of the people that do the grocery bags, they tie them in double knots. So then you're like, oh no, I can't save that bag. I just need a single knot so I can undo the knot to you use the bag You can't untie again. a double knot? Not always. Sometimes it's like really Oh, when it's really tight. Yeah. But I love a good grocery bag. So that's wow. me. That's me still today. Target bags, I think we can all agree, are the ultimate grocery bags. For sure. They're okay. the best. Okay, next up on the list. Yes or no, your definition of fine dining was Cheesecake Factory. <laughs> yes. Which I, when I went to Cheesecake Factory, I was like, we're going out tonight. <laughs> Get out we're having we a good were. time. Oh my gosh. Can I tell you, I remember being on book tour, and this may not be matter to any of the listeners, but it was with Smart Money, Smart Money, Smart Kids. So I, this would have been 2014. Yep. And we were on the road and Preston Cannon, who does all of our publishing, he's still here at Ramsey Solutions. And we were on the road and we ne- we didn't have a Cheesecake Factory in Nashville at the time. And we were out in like Dallas or something and there was a Cheesecake Factory attached to a mall. And I was like, that's where I want to have dinner. <laughs> what was Preston's response? <laughs> he was so angry with Okay, me. that's what I thought. <laughs> I was like, is that's this what really what you're picking? Out of all places in Dallas, Texas, you want the Cheesecake Factory? And I was like, yes, because it's a mi- – I thought it was like – Amazing. I you thought, thought it, was, it awesome. was like a super high end. Well, not like, I didn't think it was like a steakhouse, but I thought like, oh, it has great food, fun options. It's just a great place to have dinner. And I still think that. It is. I mean, if you can get through that exorbitant menu, which is exhausting, <laughs> then you can have a great meal there. Okay, okay, next. How about this? If you had an outside fridge or freezer in the garage that your parents refused to get rid of when they upgraded the better one inside, we never had this, but the rich kids did. Ooh. If you had a if you had a if you had a refrigerator in your garage with drinks and stuff, those were like the rich kids. That's legit. How about you? Yeah, I agree. We just my parents, we don't have an out an, a garage fridge, but my parents back home, yeah. they now have one. But it's more to store like all the my mom cooks so much, so much delicious Middle Eastern oh. food. But I was like, "Dang, like y'all are moving on up with your little garage fridge out here." Yes. So that's a good one. I I'm sorry I said it's middle class. That feels upper class to me. Next, you thought Coach was the pinnacle of high-end luxury <laughs> brands. That was Rachel for sure. Oh was gosh. this like you in like high school? Oh, I feel like was huge. Man. If coach. you had coach, oh, it was like oh, she oh the like the patchwork purse. purse. Like if you had all the oh, oh, oh it was that it was, and Dooney and Burke. Dooney and Burke. Oh, <laughs> yeah. old D and B. Oh my gosh, that was the that was like the Dillard's 100%. high point. That that was it. Yeah, it was middle class for sure. Okay, what's next? <laughs> Uh, next is if you're if you or your sibling did something great, the fam celebrated with a night out at the following: Chili's, Applebee's, Oh Charlie's, Olive Garden, Cheddar's. <laughs> that is the ultimate list of wonderful middle class restaurants. We uh, that was our birthday dinners or our birthday lunches after church was Olive Garden. Wow. We only went out like three times a year that I remember. Out that to was eat. a special one. Yeah, and if you if it's your birthday, you got to go to Olive Garden after church, and it was such a big deal. I'm gonna add two to the list that I feel like are even a tier up from that. Okay, Outback, yes, and Red Lobster. I, ne- I, I we didn't do Red Lobster. Maybe it was, we were but in it's Boston. Everywhere. New England was bigger on Red Lobster, I'm sure, because of seafood. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But when you were at Red Lobster Outback, I was like, whoa! Now the we, biscuits, we've got the some biscuits money. at Red Lobster, the cheddar biscuits, cheddar bay biscuits. Don't I sleep mean, on those. Don't. <laughs> don't sleep on them. They're so they good. still hit. Okay, okay, last w- one. Yes or no? When it rained, your dad would put his hands on his hips and tell anyone willing to listen <laughs> that we really needed this. We really, you know what? We really, we we needed so, this rain. It's so true. <laughs> Lawn was getting pretty crispy out there. Oh my gosh, that's so good. That's a good one. I know. That's like all dads, though. I feel like. Oh, all dads. That's a dad. I feel like that's Winston a dad would do move. that. That's a dad. Oh, he does still today. He sees rain and he's like, "Good, good for the garden." Good for the garden. Good for the garden. We need some rain. Oh, we okay. need some rain. So hopefully, I don't know, maybe it's not really hopefully, maybe you pass that quiz. It's not really a pass fail. It's just No. If if, you, if there are, are a lot of yeses, aren't. we relate to you. Let me just say that. We get it. Okay, okay, so there was a CNBC article from January of 2023 and explained middle class this way. Anyone who isn't living paycheck to paycheck but couldn't necessarily just stop working tomorrow and be financially secure long term. 
I don't know how I feel about that definition. Mm. I just feel like people make, I mean, we we saw stats, people making $250,000 a year are still living paycheck to paycheck. That's So sorry, CNBC. I don't think I, I don't agree with that definition. And even the wealthy people, like just to be like, you could stop working tomorrow. That we'll feels live like. Off, we'll live off your investments and stuff. But even then, that's that's down the road, you know? Yeah, you're, but when you're, you're 43, think about, even if you're wealthy, I don't know that you can stop working. about our last episode we did about um, old money versus new money. You're oh. old money. You're like old wealthy people. They could. Sure. If yeah. there's like a trust fund or something sure. like that. Sure, yeah, yeah, That's yeah. different. But yeah, I think there's way too many people middle class living paycheck to paycheck. Yeah. Okay. And there's pr- probably people making 40 grand who have no debt living on less than they make that are doing great. Right, right. So it's so much more about your money habits than it is what you make, which is so true. So here's some just traditional hallmarks of the middle class, which is owning a home, owning a car, a college education for the kids, dignified retirement, health care coverage, and money for family vacation. That's kind of what they— That kind of feels like like the American dream. But that kind of feels upper tier middle class or upper class. I mean, like, that's a lot well, here's right the there. Thing. What they don't mention, interestingly enough, is debt. Oh, that's true. So if you're yeah, yeah, leveraged yeah. with your mortgage, your car payments, yep. student loans, you're not re- putting enough into retirement, you're taking out 401k loans, you're yeah, putting yeah, mu- yeah. the you vacation on there. credit cards, you know, that's a much more dangerous situation. Totally. So the Pew Research Center defines middle class as households that earn between two thirds and double the median U.S. household income. So in 2021, the median household income was around $65,000. Okay. Um, so right now, the middle class would be making anywhere from forty three thousand three hundred and fifty dollars to a hundred and thirty thousand dollars. That's a huge range. That's a big range. I feel like making forty three thousand dollars to a hundred and thirty thousand. That's a very different lifestyle from forty three grand household yes, to a hundred. Yes, that's 130. like a hundred. I mean, yeah, that's Oof. that's that's interesting. So uh, if you're listening and you're going, okay, my family's in there. There's a huge range. Like you might be outside of that and be broke. You could be making two hundred grand to be broke. You could be making sixty and feel like you're doing great. It, yep. There's so much that depends on how much debt you have, the cost of living in your area, your lifestyle, your expenses, your family size. So it's not to say there's one that's worse or better than the others. I think we need to call that out. Yes. Because right yes. now people are going, well, how do I stack up? How do I measure? This is not like, hey, if you're middle class, you're doing it wrong. No, it's the quality of your life. And your income sure can play a part in that, but also what you choose to do with your income plays a huge part in it. Yes. So the Pew Research Center uh, actually has a middle class calculator that will tell Ooh. you your class based on income, location, and numbers of people in your household. <gasps> Ooh, that's interesting, George. We oh should do that. Okay. Now, what's fun, too? Let's do this. Let's throw in some pop culture here because there's some TV shows out there. And some characters on these TV shows and the jobs they have that don't always match their lifestyle. You're like, well, how does she do that and make that living and right. live in that apartment? So there's some fun, some fun characters. Okay, let's start here. with Big Bang Theory. You ever watch Big Bang Theory? Uh, I've seen a few episodes, but not a ton. I feel like I used to watch it okay. back in the day. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this is a good show. But Sheldon Cooper is one of the main characters on there. He's a senior theoretical physicist. Oh my gosh. At living in Pasadena, California. So the median salary, and this is all according to salary.com, which you got to assume is the expert on salary. <laughs> they <laughs> there's, say- There's an expert on salary. Salary.com should have it nailed. We'll see. One would hope. The median 2023 salary, 119 grand. So okay. the result would be upper class. Okay. Along with 17% of adults in the greater LA area. Okay. So the next one is Parks and Rec. Have you watched that one? Love Parks Why don't Parks you do Rec. that one? Because I. You're not a Parks and Recker. I'm not a fan. You uh, get the last two. Okay. Go. Leslie Nope from Parks and Rec, who is the uh, director of recreation in Pawnee, Indiana, which is actually based off Muncie, Indiana. Fun fact. Mm. The median 2023 salary, 60, almost 63 grand. Okay. And the result. Middle class, along with 53% of adults in Muncie, Indiana. So pretty spot on. All right, next is Rachel Green from Friends. That's right. She's a waitress and a server in New York, New York. And the median salary for a waitress or server in 2023, according to salary.com, is $24,701. Wow. So the result is that she would be in the lower class, along with 30% of adults in the greater New York City area. That is actually shocking. I would think New York City is so wildly more. expensive. With tips? Do they not include tips in that? That's the question I have because okay. that feels. Uh, and next is another great. And that's favorite. like making eleven or twelve bucks an hour. Yeah, which would just be like your 
I think servers make more, more than, than that, that, depending yeah. on where they're working. But, All right. Next is Jessica wow. Day from New Girl. Oh yeah, so funny. So she's a middle school teacher, season one, Los Angeles, with a median salary of seventy one thousand two hundred and ninety dollars. Again, salary.com. So the result is that she's middle class, along with forty nine percent of adults in the greater LA area. Good for her. And yet she had about so four funny. dudes as roommates. I know. So you know, <laughs> such a funny. But show. hey, living in LA, making seventy grand, that's actually realistic. You're not getting your own space. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to have be having some roommates. That's good. Okay, so we had some fun there, Rachel. But the, the real question that people are asking, and if you watch the headlines, here's the big thing they're saying. Is the middle class shrinking? Yes. Okay, so what, what percentage mean? do you think of Americans are middle class? Okay, let me think. Lower class, upper class. I feel like it's probably like a quarter on each side, which leaves about half. Okay, well, you're correct, fair? George. 50 50% of America. Exactly 50. 50 is considered middle class right now. Yep. Wow. So in 2021, 50% of Americans were considered middle class. And that number is a lot lower, actually, than it used to be. So we have this fun graph, which may be on video. Maybe we can pull up maybe. and post. But it shows in 1971 that the lower income range of people in America was 25%. Middle was 61. Upper was 14 Oh. Now, today, it went from 25 lower to 29. It went from 61 middle class to 50%. And upper went from 14 to 21. So more people have grown in that So area. lower class has grown. Upper class has grown even more. Mm -hmm. And that has shrunk the middle class. And the middle class has shrunk, which is why they say, is the middle class shrinking? That's the question. Why is that? Well, I think one reason is that wages are stagnant. And... The cost of living continues to rise. I mean, I feel like we see that in the housing market and inflation right now in history that we're experiencing. So when you put all that together, it's like, yeah, I mean. Inflation has gone up further than wages have. Yes, and yes. So that, that Which would actually promote, on. though, I would feel like people struggling more in the lower class than the yeah, upper. Yeah, that's but interesting. So the middle class feels like they're on the endangered species list. Because they're shrinking. They're shrinking. Yep. And wages are stagnant, like you mentioned. Cost of living is constantly going up. Inflation's not going anywhere. And experts are calling this the squeeze. Oh. You got to have a fancy word to throw at it. What's happening? Okay. So let's talk about, regardless of where you are, here are some points to remember always that you should still budget. I don't care if you're upper class, lower class, middle class, being intentional with your money is something we will always stand by. And here on Smart Money Happy Hour, we want you to be smart about your money. And budgeting is part of that. So Absolutely. that will always be one of the foundational principles to go back to. And Rachel, you talk about this a lot. But contentment is a huge part of this. Like practicing contentment, choosing to do a little less of that middle class consumption, which is what the middle class is known for, by the way, uh, if you're feeling that squeeze. And so it might mean yeah. you're eating out less. You're not going on vacation as much. You're paying off the debt because you need the margin. So don't put pressure on yourself to keep up with the Joneses, as you like to say, especially friends and family who may be in that upper class. And they're going, come on, just come out with it. It'll be a good time. And you feel that pressure. Yeah, for sure. Because that's real. That's hard. That is really, yeah. And last, I would say to get creative. So think of new ways of living your life. You know, some people, they're stuck in this mindset of like, oh, how it's going to be. But think, well, what if I didn't have debt? Honestly, like what if you paid everything off and you had no income leaving in the form of payments? What if you actually, you know, put a down payment down for a house that is not crazy out of your budget? Which might mean resetting expectations on the house you thought yes, you deserved. which is big. So I think it's like this idea of, okay, let's reframe what the world is telling us how to live and actually think about what is true to the numbers of our life. Because math— Sadly, doesn't have emotion, George. That's true. Numbers don't have emotion. It is what it is. So get creative with the numbers you have and say, okay, how can we create a life we love in that? Well, on so many people, it's it's fun sometimes to point fingers and go like, well, it's the upper class's fault and it's the lower class. We're paying for And yep. instead just going like, what can I control? Because I can't control yes. the economy and taxes and all of these things, but I can control my own spending, mm -hmm. my own behavior, my own expectations. And so a lot of people choose to go like, we're going to move. We're going to downsize. We're going to make some sacrifices right now until we get on our feet or increase our income or yeah. until inflation cools down so that we can uh, survive this. To enjoy, yep. But I will say, uh, team hashtag save the middle class. 
Is that a thing? Is out there. Yes, because it's true. I mean, with the middle class, they're, when the middle class is thriving and moving, the thing about the average American family out there, like when they are doing well, there's better education, there's lower crime, better health outcomes, and higher life satisfaction. So people actually enjoy their life more, right, when you're content with what's going on. So I think applauding the middle class, helping the middle class, and seeing that as like a, it's a prosper of society, right? I think they really are. It's the backbone of America. It is America. Like you're saying, it's like you have LA, New York City, and everything in between. And when the middle class is doing well, it's like, it just, it thrives in society and who we are as a country. The middle class, Rachel, really sustains the economy. Like you mentioned, they are the backbone. So there's nothing wrong with being middle class. There is something wrong with not living on less than you make not being on a budget, staying in debt, trying to impress people for the wrong reasons. And so those are the things that I'm against when it comes to any class, upper class, middle yeah, class. Yeah, regardless of what you make. Lower yeah. class. Mm-hmm. And so there's no like, well, if you, I don't want you to be lower class because it's a harder life. You know, I don't want anyone to be in poverty and feel like they can't achieve their financial goals. But you don't have to aspire to be a billionaire either. Sure. Like it's totally fine. Yes. You can love your life and make $50,000 a year forever. Yep. That's okay. Absolutely. As long as you're doing it on your terms for yourself. That's right. That's right. So there's a great uh, Instagram that just brings a little bit of levity to life. And I feel like we appreciate it. It's so great. It's called Middle Class Fancy. It was partially the inspiration for this entire episode. That is fair. We saw Middle Class Fancy and we all related because everyone was like, yes, yes, yes. We all feel it. We all see it and relate to it so deeply. So uh, there are some funny memes out there. So many memes. I don't yeah. know how do you describe a meme. Like if you had to explain a meme, I mean, obviously Sharon Ramsey knows what memes are <laughs> because she's on Instagram. But like, how do you tell people what a meme is? It's a it's picture. It's a picture with a funny photo photo, and or text. Yeah. That caption around it. Mm-hmm. Okay. So this one is really funny, George. So this is a text conversation. It's a screenshot of some text conversations and a picture. So okay. you be one person, I'll be the other. All right. Why is there a cheese fountain in the kitchen with a picture of a cheese fountain on the table? Like a fondue machine in my, I say. <laughs> Our tax return hit. <laughs> We agreed to put that in our savings account. You never support my dreams. <laughs> and that is middle class fancy. Just Taking your old... tax refund and going, I'm going to buy a cheese fondue yeah, fountain. Fondue fountain. You can put chocolate. You can put cheese. Melting pot. The melting pot. That's that a big was one. That is middle fancy. class. That was fancy. But that feels like that upper was... middle. Like that was, I could never That was like it. when you graduated high school, you went there for your graduation dinner. It was like, a big deal. That was a. Oh my gosh. Is that still around? I think so. The melting pot? I thought about it recently and I was like, I need to look it up. I need to go back to the melting pot. I've never been to one. (gasps) What? I don't know that I can afford it to this day. We should do a smart money happy hour dinner at the melting pot. Is that a thing? And we need everyone else to tag us when they go to. Oh my gosh. Love (laughs) a melting pot. Have Mm -hmm. you ever spent your tax refund on something frivolous? I feel like I haven't gotten a refund in a while, so I don't know. I was going to say, Winston and I, we err on the side we'd rather pay. Then be paid. Then give the will. government. I know an we're, loan. we're a little. I know we're a little bit in that brainwash mindset. Yeah, I get that. Uh, but, but early on, yeah, I feel like when we got, yeah, it was if like, we got one, let's it was do like, something. Yeah, let's do something fun. But I don't remember specifically what we what we spent money on. Yeah. Well, our advice for that, by the way, is don't give the government an interest free loan. And adjust your W-2. If you consistently are getting a refund, that's not a good thing. You need to adjust your W-2 so that you get closer to zero, to where you don't owe too much, you don't get a refund of too much. That's right. So this next meme is a tweet, and it says, being in Costco is such a disorienting experience. Like, what do you mean this is the cereal slash hot tub aisle? (laughs) That is classic Costco behavior. That is Costco. They don't label the aisles and it's on purpose, I've realized. Because they want you to like just wander through the store and buy stuff. You're like, I didn't know I needed 6,000 staplers, but I will buy them. The longer they get you to wander, the more money they make. It makes sense because you find stuff you didn't know existed. For sure. All right, the next one, uh, our producer Lindsay will really appreciate. It says, nobody with a blank. And then it says, a couple you went to high school with who just bought a house. So we did a thing. And there's a picture of them buying a house. That and is Lindsay, classic. What happened a few years ago, Lindsay? I 
I did a thing, guys. <laughs> you were that person? I went, yes. She posted I a did. photo. I, <laughs> and Jordan was like, no, you didn't do that. And I said, yes, I did. Yes, you I were did. proud though. I was. I just thought I Should was. Should we put hip the photo the up on the screen them. since we have it? Yes. If Jordan agrees, yeah, put it on up. He'll agree. Yeah. Okay. He'll agree. <laughs> so Doesn't again, mean. there's nothing wrong with posting your accomplishments. I think Thanks. it's fine. Right. There is something wrong with saying we did a thing. <laughs> we did a thing. <laughs> you can picture it too. We oh did no. A thing. Horrible. Oh. Oh my well, gosh. God bless. Yeah. That's that's a lot for me. That's and I, a lot. I I, it's a big, it really is a big accomplishment. It is something to celebrate. Yeah, but maybe I didn't need to say, we did a thing today, guys. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> Lindsay, your heart is so pure, though. It is so pure. You did it with good intentions. Guys, thank you. You probably liked the photo anyway, so I appreciate that. I need to go back and check if I hit the heart button Now on you it. can. I probably now you did. can before Man. I get back to it. Okay. The next one is another tweet, and the original tweet says, before social media, what did people do to get attention? Someone quote tweeted it with the response, order fajitas, <laughs> which is just perfect because we've all been there. You've been in the chilies and you ordered whatever you, Rachel gets. And then it's the service coming out. They got special gloves on. There's like, like a, the biggest there's like a two foot wooden board they're carrying it on. <laughs> and the, everyone's head. Who's that guy? The heads are turning. Who got so the fajitas? True. They got and then you're jealous. You're going, I should have got the fajitas. I should have got the fajitas. Could have been the bell of the ball. Look at them. Look at them getting Star all this the attention. Look at them getting all this attention. Oh, is there, George. Is there someone in your family that is that person? That would do it with like... Kind with, of the with, underlying, like they want fajitas, but they kind of know like everyone else is going to be like, oh, dang, they got the fajitas. Um, Who's most likely? Oh, my gosh. Who, what's the superlative? I mean, my dad, I would say maybe Dave. He would get the like, he would most do, like, grandiose the table thing. Side, or like the yeah, table like, side guac, or get the the seafood tower, like the yes. like whatever the thing is. That's right? a flex. <laughs> Love the seafood tower. <laughs> but I'm usually the beneficiary, so I don't complain. I'm like, sure. Wow. I want it all. I'll take it all. Yeah, I I would. Yeah. But uh, are you ever that person who orders something and someone else gets something, or if it's Winston and you're like, oh, that looks way that is better. me. That's me all the time. I'm like, can I have a bite of that? And then he ends up eating your meal that he didn't <laughs> want. Because he's a nice person. I will say, can I have a bite of that? Or someone orders it. I'm like, oh, I wanted that too. Can we, you want to split? I'm a splitter. You're a splitter. I'm a splitter. With like random people. Not like in the restaurant. <laughs> he's like, hey, you, hey, you can I have some of that? She's walking up to tables being like, that look, you want to split? I got the enchiladas. It? You yeah, no. You want to split? Not that deep. Well, we recently went with the team and we had a great Mexican meal. What city was that? Salt Lake City. Oh, yes, we did. You're right. And de- yeah. The Red Iguana. The Red Iguana. Shout out that to Red was Iguana. really great in Salt Lake City. But you didn't ask to split with any of us. No, I got a full one because it wasn't on my tab. I didn't have to pay for it. <laughs> the there it is. <laughs> so I got the Red Iguana meal with everything. And I was like, I'm going to do it all. So, Rachel, that was fun. But I got to ask the question before we wrap. Is the middle class extinct? Are you worried about no, this? No, no. You're not freaking out about it. You seem very calm. I... Yeah, I no, I don't I don't think they're going extinct. No. That gives me great comfort. How about you? I'm not too worried about it. Looking at the actual stats and showing that the upper class is growing at a faster rate than the lower class makes me feel like we're moving in the right direction. Yeah. But I truly think with the record high levels of consumer debt that we're seeing from auto loan, student loans, credit mortgages, cards. credit cards, we have a problem in America where we're obsessed with debt. And I think that is what's causing people to feel stuck, to feel like they're not even in the middle class. They're going, well, I wish I was in the middle class. That would be great. Yeah. I can't even get there. I think debt is the biggest problem in America today. Yeah, because it steals your income. So regardless of your income, your money habits play such a role in how you feel about money. Being free from debt and being free from money stress is it's a huge part of our message and what we want for everyone. So yes. that's what we want. Regardless of middle class or not, oh, be free. Be free. And hey, if you're middle class fancy, you make me happy. So thank middle you for being class you. Fancy. <laughs> I love it. All right. So it's almost the end of the episode, and we close out every episode with guilty, guilty as, as charged. charged. And this is where our producer Lindsay gives us a new guilty as charged question every week. And if we are guilty, we have to take a sip. All right. What's something you were jealous of your friends having when growing up that was really just middle class fancy? Oh. Like the friends you were like, oh my gosh, they're I rich. I mean, a hot tub. If you had a hot tub, you were rich. That's a big <laughs> yeah. one. Did you have that friend who like you went to their house? You're like, oh my gosh, they have, a, the hot tub. they have a hot tub. 
that was a big deal. Or the the couches with like um, the cup, cup holders. holders. That <laughs> and was every next seat level. Recline. And every seat recline. <laughs> if you had the that, multiple reclining, ca- like that was big, next level. That's a that was. big deal. For me, it was like if you had like a basement that was like the playroom basement. Oh, I was like, whoa. Like a finished basement. Yeah, the finished basement. Big deal. Next level. Yeah, if there's like a game room or a computer room or like that, that was like, yeah, you were rich yeah. at that point. For some reason, a basketball hoop felt like, whoa, oh, they yeah. got a basketball uh, An in-ground pool. You were, you were made of money. If you Even in an above ground pool, like w- there was none of that. Like I guess because in Boston, just a pool. Yes, there's less pools. Yeah, but my my best friend had an above ground pool, and I was like, they've got some money, man. They're they, doing pretty well. They are doing good, doing good. Pools, hot tubs. So I guess water and water. reclining furniture. Reclining is furniture what is separates you. <laughs> Huge. That's amazing. Huge. I felt that for sure. I. Oh yeah. Oh man. Good times. Computer but now looking rooms. back, you're like. It's like normal. A sofa they weren't with like a, super with wealthy. A cup holder. <laughs> they just had more money than our family did. Yeah, it's true. But or they used debt. Dun dun dun. Dang. What's the thing now that you have that you're like young Rachel would have freaked out? Uh, we when we built our house, we did a separate <laughs> ice machine. Whoa, like a separate machine that just makes that ice. That makes ice. Yes. And it's it's like my thing that I'm like, it just, it makes me feel good in life. That is the bougie. And it's like the Sonic Eyes. I just Sonic Eyes. It's the Sonic Eyes. And that's nice. a bougie, that was a bougie move. And we even, when we were building, they were like, well, you can do different, um, like shapes for your ice, right? So you can do like oh. the, the classic, which is the cheapest. You can upgrade. And it was, it was a mid-tier for the Sonic Ice. And I was like, I am going to put that in the budget. I'm in the wrong business. I didn't know you could sell Sonic Ice as like, this is the... <laughs> it's the yeah. middle class so that, 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 that's What is low class so ice? That's what we got. Probably just that like ex- the regular cubes like we get out of our refrigerator. Oh, yeah, yeah. Nobody, yeah. you're better than the that. The regs, the regular the regs. cube. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that that feels bougie That's good. to me. That's good. We got we have a separate when we ice machine. bought our house, we redid the garage floors because they were like all cracked, <gasps> and we got the fancy like speckled oh nice garage George. floors. And I was like, that's bougie. I think this is it. I think we made I've it. Made it. And then your kids will be like, I remember middle class fancy of the fancy Being garage the garage floors that are speckled. Yep. Oh my gosh, so good, Amazing. so good. Love America, George. Love it. Want to wave a flag? Greatest right country. Now. Let out an there. eagle fly over. And that's the it other thing, Rachel. Right. Can we just call out that if you live in America, even low, like if you're in that's lower great, class, yes. you are still wealthy 0. compared to most 0. of the world. percent of the globe. Yeah. For and sure. so it just goes to show you that contentment, comparisons, like it's huge. Yep. All right, George. Stuff. So our drink, uh, did I? It's called the Waldorf. I know. Did I? I think we're about it? equal. I don't know. We did not finish it. We'll say that for the listeners. Uh, it's a little too. It's intense. It's very boozy. I will say that. What's in it? The Waldorf has absinthe, mm-hmm. which is probably what you're tasting. Mm-hmm. It's kind of that licorice mm-hmm. taste that you're getting. Yep, I got that. It's got rye whiskey. Yep. It's a little more spice. It's got sweet vermouth and bitters. Okay. And it comes out to three dollars and forty-seven cents. So it's a very uh, I would say alcohol forward drink, but if you like the licorice kind of taste, you would probably love the this Waldorf. drink. So I'm gonna give it. So a, is, that a, is that a drink you can go to a, like a just a restaurant and say I want the I want a Waldorf? That's a good question. I don't think so. Okay. I think you have to go to a pretty uppity bar. Okay, so this is a very specific cocktail. Yeah, it's good. But to know. I would give it a. I'm gonna give it a seven out of ten. Yeah. Gosh, am I doing group think right now? Because I think I would say the same. Really? Maybe six. Okay. It's a little harsh for you. Yeah. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. Well, if you want to make it at home, we've got the recipe for you in the show notes. So uh, give it a try this weekend if you are of the persuasion. Yep. And let us know what you think. That's right. So it's uh, closing time, George, of Ooh. this episode. It's been so fun, you guys. If you love this episode, please leave a review. We read them. We appreciate them. It helps with the algorithm of getting this podcast in front of other people to hopefully give them a smile, a laugh, and a little entertainment with their money. So. Make sure to uh, leave a review, subscribe if you've not subscribed, because next Thursday we're going to have a whole new episode of Smart Money Happy Hour. Hour.